just want to I just want to apologize for a consistent misspelling of the word uh, simplicial, which is written everywhere here, I think, with Y, whereas it should be with I. Just didn't have time to, to fix it. I hope it's okay. 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 So uh, simplicial complexes. Um, so it's easier uh, to draw it. So I, I assume most people have met it. Uh, somewhere. So we have uh, faces of different dimension. The, uh, the faces are closed under containment. That is all the subsets of a, of a certain face are face as well. And, um, and this is the object. And uh, we will be interested in the D cycles in the simplicial complexes, this is a subsets of D minus one faces, which have even degree. So we'll be working over F2. Okay. And one, uh, uh, one notation, notation KI, KI will denote the I faces of the complex I. Okay. Please uh, ask me any questions if you, if you, I mean, this is the place to ask because uh, I didn't define it properly, of course. So uh, the simplicial uh, complexes are used uh, with much success in geometry, in topology, in uh, visual processing, and so on. Uh, to a lesser degree, they are they are used in computer science and in and in the networks. However, there are a number of very beautiful applications, and this is a very interesting uh, and not uh, too well studied object: the, comb the combinatorics of simplicial complexes. Uh, okay, so okay, so there are very recently there have been very interesting results concerning the uh, uh, analogs of expanders in such complexes. So this is very useful for uh, derandomizations and such things. Uh, the simplicial complexes are in a way a generalization of the graphs. Uh, they have they are richer than hypergraphs. And they are more tractable than hypergraphs, but this structure is not always applicable. So this is the table. Okay, so uh, our goal here is uh, somewhat modest. So, uh, so, so I at least saw that uh, if you want to think about harder problems with simplicial complexes, one should be able to, to deal with seemingly simpler ones. Okay, and the uh, so we take so we take a theorem from graph theory, not hard theorem, uh, which says that if the graph is dense enough, then it contains uh, a large enough cycle. So the exact formula formulation is uh, is given here. Okay, and uh, this theorem is not hard to prove. I mean, okay, if we so what it says there that if average degree is about k, then there is a cycle of size k. Okay, so the, the proof sketch appearing here, I will assume not average degree, but say all the degrees are at least k. Okay, uh, if one don't care much about constants, this is good enough. So if all the degrees are at least k, we do the following. So we start from any vertex and we perform a walk on the graph G without ever returning to K previously visited vertices. Since the degree is, uh, is at least K, we can, we can assure that this will not happen. So at some point the walk will meet a vertex which was uh, visited before, and this, is, this will close uh, the desired cycle. Uh, Igor, are you there? Yes. Yes, okay, so, so from time to time, say something because I sort of speak in vacuum. Uh, okay. Oh, welcome to Zoom. <laughs> no, no, I, well, okay. <laughs> Just make noises. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this is the theorem that we want to generalize. So what do we want? So uh, the Ergesh uh, Galay says that the size of maximal 
cycle is at least the something which is uh, which we may call some sort of density of the graph g okay the ratio between the ages and the vertices and uh, what we want to prove uh, something for d dimensional cycles which is that the uh, size of maximal simple d cycle is at least some function of the density of the suitable density of the uh, of the k-dimensional complex. Okay, so this is uh, this is important. This is our goal. That's what we want to do. Uh, so Edish Gale uh, choose a linear function. We will not be able to prove a linear linear function, but we will prove something. Okay, uh, let me just add that uh, uh, cycles or simple cycles in uh, in higher dimension are quite complicated objects. And they are not really triangulations of the sphere or, or of some uh, uh, surface. They can be quite ugly. They have unbounded degree. They have huge, huge size. They, be, they behave quite differently from what we know in graphs. Okay, and this is why uh, this problem turned out to be not so easy. It's really hard to feel the cycles. OK, so in order to generalize it, we need some other ideas, uh, uh, because the proof that we have presented doesn't, doesn't generalize at all. So we need some different type of proof. So one such uh, an attempt would be to observe that the graphs with a small uh, maximal uh, circuit uh, cycle, this uh, family of graphs is closed under minors. Now we have uh, powerful theorems that if, uh, if a graph is too dense, then it contains the, uh, the, um, the suitable uh, minors of, of a certain size, of size k here. It's not particular to the cycle. It's, it's, uh, it has to do with, uh, with any minor of size k. And then we can prove a slightly uh, weaker bound that the size of the, uh, of the, the CG is uh, a little less than, than the density. Okay, but if we want to generalize this, we have to deal with the minors of simplicial complexes. And uh, the problem is the minors of simplicial complexes that unlike in graphs, they are not simplicial complexes. What we should do. Okay, another attempt is to reinterpret the uh, uh, the Erdos Gale and say that e divided by v minus one is actually e divided by a rank of the graph. There's just a number of vertices, where the rank of the graph naturally is the size of maximum a cyclic subset of edges in it. Okay, assuming G is connected, and we may assume it. Okay, so this already can generalize, okay, and uh, it turns out to be a matroidal generalization. So if we look at the uh, EG divided by rank G, uh, this is a rather matroidal notion. It appears in the Nash Williams theorem, which is sort of matroidal theorem in graphs, and it has high di higher dimensional analog. So what would be the higher dimensional analog? I'll just point out that we can strengthen a bit the theorem of Erdos Gale. Instead of looking the, the entire set of it, it's not V, it's obvious. Uh, instead of looking at the global density, we can look at the maximal local density, which will be at least as much as the global density. And this is this parameter will be called the gamma G. Okay. So matroids, so of course we can say only a few words about them. So we have uh, elements and they have, we have independent sets and the independent sets are closed under containment and they have the change property like uh, the larger one always have an element that can be transferred to a smaller one. So the most uh, uh, famous matroids are the graphic matroids where the elements are the ages and the dependent sets are the forests. Linear matrix, so we have a subset of a linear space 
and the independent set are linearly independent subsets. So for simplicial uh, uh, matrices, we'll have the edges are the uh, G-cyclages, and the uh, independent set are the acyclic subsets of, uh, of these G-cyclages. Okay, and we'll denote uh, by CM the maximal side circuit in M, and uh, gamma M this uh, local density matrix. So just remark that in matrix, there are no cycles, there are no only circuits, which are the minimal side. Okay? But since it's exactly what we are interested in, so this seeds us. And the goal is to lower bound the uh, size of the uh, maximal circuit in M in terms of the density Okay, so uh, I, I'm, no I'm no specialist in matrices, of course, so, uh, so what I'm going to say is a bit, a bit primitive or so on, but, but okay. So you, you don't have to understand much about matrices to understand what I'm talking about, just the basic definitions. So uh, they are minors in matrices and, and the people did study them, of course. And the very heavy theorem of Gillen says that if you take a linear matrix, and as was mentioned in the previous page, the uh, simplicial matrix is, uh, is linear. So if a linear matrix lacks uh, a size k minor, well, special minor, but okay, in our case, it's okay, then we know that the density cannot be too much. It's, it's doubly exponential. And uh, one can conclude using this theorem that the uh, that CM is at least uh, log log the density. Okay, so the problem with this, uh, the main problem with this actually, if if we work over F two, then it gives something. Okay, something weak, and uh, and we use too heavy a hammer, but uh, in general. Which I do not present here. The uh, the results hold over any field, and over any field, this completely breaks down. I mean, it just gives nothing. Over Q gives nothing. Okay, so this is not uh, not very. Uh, it's very nice to have something. It's not very exciting after all. So the main uh, the main tool will be the Seymour lemma, which we sort of conjectured conjectured for a graph and then found in the literature. And it says the following. And it's it's not it's a non-trivial statement even for graphs. And little known, I would say, statement. Okay, so let M be loopless and connected. What is connected, I will say in a second. Loopless means that there are no self-loops. There are no edges of, uh, of rank zero. And let C be a maximal circuit in it. So if we contract M with respect to C, then the size of the maximal circuit goes down. So this is the, this is the main uh, uh, tool we are going to apply. Okay, well, of course we have uh, further developments, but this is the core of the, of the argument. Igor? Igor? Hear you. Oh. Well, okay. Any questions so far? Uh, good. You hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, this is good. Okay. So uh, we mentioned two things. We mentioned the connectedness and we mentioned minors. So what is the connectedness? So we say that the uh, E and F in M are equivalent if uh, they lie in some common circuit, okay? And it turns out, turns out to be an equivalence relation. It's not completely obvious, but it is. And the equivalent classes are called uh, components. Okay. So if we look what it means in, uh, in graphs, so it, uh, it corresponds to be connected components of graphs. This is the, the meaning. The elements are the edges, of course, 
can be transposed to be connected components. This is the connectivity, connectedness. It's about minors. Uh, so deletion is easy. You just uh, throw away the subset of edges and the induced matroid is the same, uh, the same independent set that survived are the independent set of the new matroid. The contraction, the contraction is harder. It's better to think about graphs in this respect. So the definition is that the independent set of the contracted uh, M over A do extend to independent sets over M. Okay, and we throw away A in any way, and the rest of elements uh, remain. Okay, so what happens to circuits? So as you see here, the red edges, which were not, didn't form a circuit before, now they do. Okay, one has to be careful with it because uh, because some some loops are created and some. Uh, okay, so. This is the, the picture with the circuit is not definition. The definition is on the left, but this is the illustration of what happens with the circuits. Uh, okay. So uh, what we do, we consider the following uh, decomposition tree of M. So without loss of generality, generality we are interested only on connected and loopless M's. And the composition tree looks like this. So uh, every root of this tree, every x there, has associated matroid mx and a maximal circuit in it. Uh, the root has the original m and the maximal circuit there. Now the children of x are the components of the um, contracted matroid. And more, moreover, so when we contract m, with respect to CX, uh, some loops are created and are thrown away. Okay, so what is the composition tree is good for? Uh, so using this decomposition uh, tree, we can prove the following. So let uh, SM of T, a function, of, uh, a numerical function of this matrix. Uh, which will will be a maximal size of the maximal subset of edges, which have a rank at most t. And you may remember the rank is the uh, maximal dependence size of the maximal dependence of. And the theorem is uh, that this density of M is at most uh, this function of uh, CM squared, something like that. Okay. And uh, this is a useful term because we can compute this SM in interesting cases, in cases that are interesting in, are interesting for us. So, and uh, reversing it, we can obtain lower bound of the desired form. We'll see it. Okay. So, how uh, how this is shown? Uh, the number of observations. So, first, I will not explain why they are correct. It, it's not hard, but it's not uh, it's not completely obvious. So this uh, T has at most uh, uh, the number of leaves is at least rank of M. Actually, it's not only the round, uh, number of leaves; it's the total size of T is it, is uh, is at most rank of M. So this is the first observation. The second observation: if we look at any leaf and uh, look at the path from the root to, to this to the sleeve z and look at the uh, vertices on the way then this union over all leaves of span union of the c axis and span is the closure like in uh, linear, linear spaces and in trees and so on uh, is exactly em so so this uh, left hand side okay it covers the the entire space of elements and the third observation, that the rank of the union of the C axis along the uh, along the path, this is original rank, is the sum of their ranks. And uh, since by Seymour lemma, we know that as we go down, the rank drops uh, drops down, at least by one, then we get. Uh, Cm minus one plus Cm minus two and so on and so on because the rank of the circuit is its size 
uh, minus one. There is a type of there should be CM minus one to CM minus two and so on. Uh, so combining this three observation, one concludes that the uh, size of EM, the number of elements is at most rank M, which is the number of the leaves times uh, the, uh, the size of these spans. And we know that the rank of the span is at most, uh, I don't know, CM square. So therefore it will be at most uh, this thing. Okay, I guess what I'm saying is uh, uh, it's not so easy to, to see at this speed but nevertheless, if you believe what is uh, written there, it's quite uh, obvious. And what is written there does require some uh, amount of, of work. Okay. And uh, the last, uh, uh, last page. Uh, okay. So we, we've dealt in matrix, but as you remember, our original goal was the simply shell complexes. So let's get back to the simply shell complexes. And for this, we need to compute this function CM, which appeared before. Okay, what is the uh, what is the size of uh, of a set A uh, of uh, rank T? Okay, and then there is a, a, a theorem which follows from the work of uh, Bjorner and, uh, and Kalai, but it's not explicit there actually. It was, it, it was made explicit in the work of uh, in observation of uh, linear, lineal and pallet, but, uh, but then they learned out that uh, this was known before. Anyway, the technique of the proof is the same. And the, it's two steps. One step is to establish that the extremal A is shifted with respect to combinatorial shifting like in Kruskal katona theorem. And once we know exactly the structure of A, it is not hard to show that the rank of this D is at least uh, the size of A to the power of one minus one over D plus one, which implies that S is uh, more or less smaller than T by one plus one over D. And it leads to the conclusion that the size of the minimal, uh, so, sorry, maximal uh, D cycle in K is at least its density to the power of d plus d plus two, which is the power is slightly less than half. So this, this is how far the general matridal theorem takes us. And then with further effort, different idea and more, more related to simplicial complexes, our final result uh, shows that the CDK uh, is at least uh, square root of, uh, of the density uh, minus one. So this is uh, as good as we could show. And uh, the main upper open problem is uh, how tight it is. So as we see, at least in, in one dimension, it's not tight. In other dimension, we really don't know. We, my personal guess would be that this is not tight. It can be improved. But uh, this is uh, as far as we got. Okay. Thank you.